Hi, my name is Jonathan Chu. I'm the National Content Director for High School Programs for the Princeton Review. And today, we're going to look at some problems that the College Board has released that will be representative of the changes on the redesigned SAT. One of which we see here, a math problem. If k is a positive constant different from 1, then which of the following could be the graph of y minus x is equal to k times the quantity x plus y in the xy plane? And so for here, for our Princeton Review students, when we see a problem like this, we understand that when we see a problem, let's see if we can eliminate any answer choices right off the bat, just from recognizing some of the properties in the equation. In this particular equation, we do not see any sort of exponents. No twos, no little twos up there. And so therefore, we know that this is going to be a linear equation, or in essence, a line. Therefore, any answer choice that does not contain a line, we can cross off. Sure enough, Answer choice D, we can eliminate, because it is a parabola. Therefore, at this point, we might be thinking, how will I start? Where am I going to start to solve this problem? And again, for Princeton Review students, we understand that, well, we'll use some data from the graphs and insert them into the equation. For example, let's take the ordered pair of 0, 2. That's representative of answer choice A. If I take my ordered pair 0, 2 and plug that into this equation, I would get 2 minus 0 is equal to k times 0 plus 2. Solving this down, we will get 2 is equal to k times 2. And at this stage, this is when we must be very mindful of the hot words presented to us in the problem. The problem stated that k is a positive constant. It could be a fraction, it could be an integer, it doesn't matter. We know that it must be positive. So then we ask ourselves, is there any possible number that's positive and not 1 that when you multiply it to 2, you actually, in fact, get back a 2. And there isn't one. Therefore, this equation does not work, and so therefore we can eliminate answer choice A. Moving on to answer choice B, we can use the very convenient point of, at the origin, and when I use the ordered pair 0, 0, and plug that into the equation, we get 0 minus 0 is equal to k times 0 plus 0. Solving this equation now, we get 0, is equal to k times 0, and we ask ourselves that question again. What positive number can I plug in for k here to actually make this equation work? What number can I multiply to 0 will get me back a 0? And at this point we say, hey, I actually can plug in any positive number other than 1, even if I did use 1, but the problem said we couldn't, but any positive number other than 1. And when I multiply it to 0, I actually will get back a 0. So if this equation does work, we know that we've hit the right answer. So then we circle B, we can confidently select B as the right answer, and we know we've gotten it correct. So once we see this question, this type of question, our students will be able to deduce how to break down the question using our techniques and strategies by using the answer choices. And notice how we did not do any sort of algebraic manipulation of the original expression. We simply plugged in data points, and we got the right answer. We know we got the right answer, and we can confidently move on to the next question.